Now let's look into a new topic for today. Let's look into anti-aging, reversing aging. Let's compare what happened when I was young in medical school to today. Reverse aging. Rub it on your face. To turning the clock back on your aging organs. Your insides sometimes are older than your outside. Then. Can calorie restriction add 20 years to your life? Plus the new procedure that takes years off your face. This is real cutting edge stuff. How's that feel, Sally? Amazing. Today on The Doctors. We all experience aches and pains, forgetfulness, fatigue, the lines on our faces. Well, we asked women all over the country what they wanted to know about getting older. Why is it so hard to lose weight when you get older? I feel like I am 25. I look like I'm 50. How do I make my outside match my inside? Why can't I remember things anymore? Why don't I have enough energy? My body's going through all these changes. I feel like I don't know what's happening. I wanted to make a comment but I forgot what it was. I wished I slept better. I wake up at least two times every night. I'm terrified of getting older. Do you ever think that modern science will ever find the fountain of youth? My body is sagging. Gravity is not my friend. I wish I, wish, I, wish I could turn back the clock. Is it possible to turn back our biological clocks? The average life expectancy of women is 80, and men, it's 75. Sorry, guys. But can we unlock the fountain of youth and stay young for as long as possible? Well, today we're going to talk about ways to catch disease before it catches you. Simple things you can do to add 15 to 20 years of productive life. There are lots of anti-aging theories out there and ideas about how to live longer. Some are cutting edge, and as we know, some are very controversial. One I want to talk about right now is calorie restriction. A lot of people swear by this. Calorie restriction, they're saying, can add 20 years to your life. But these are ascetic diets. Well, when you think about it, when you've seen these people who've lived to 110, 115 years, you see photos of them from Armenia or wherever they come from, one thing in common, they're all very thin. And when asked, what do you eat? Oh, a few berries, a little bit of dried meat. So maybe there is something there with uh, restricting calories. Maybe it does keep you. From aging. Yeah, we kind of wonder why it works, and I think, you know, scientists are trying to figure it out, but it seems like it, the body maybe goes into a, a mini hibernation state and your, the metabolism slows down just enough so that all, all that exhaust uh, that your cells normally produce from, from using energy is decreased so there's less uh, oxidative stress, less free radicals, so you, you have less aging. That's exactly you it, know, that's, Jim, that's that your exactly, body is right. working less. It's kind of shutting down. And, that there's you know, less to... I, don't, I couldn't do it because I'm a cyclist and I burn a lot of energy. And, you know, some of these guys had to give up biking. Well, that's the thing. I read it. the I personal could... stories and, and one of the guys who wants to live longer said he loved mountain biking, but he doesn't have enough energy to mountain yeah. bike anymore. Well, well that's living not long, living. What kind of life is yeah. that? Yeah, I think you, you have to be happy. I mean, calorie restricting is fine. That means basically to me being healthy. You got to exercise. There's, there's no, you know, quick fix for anything. We've known that. We've talked about that. There's no fountain of youth. You just got to live healthy, eat right, and enjoy your life. What if you're sitting there starving and you, you know, you end up dying wanting that last piece of pizza? Well, that's what you a lot of people to, say. Yeah. You have to be very <laughs> careful what, what's called negative protein or nitrogen balance. Mm -hmm. If you're not bringing in enough protein, protein, you're gonna, your body is actually going to start withering away. You'll lose your hair, well, your fingernails, mm -hmm. those parts you of your body, for your, body to, you know, you know, your hooves. Yeah, I say restrict your calories, you know, from back down to the normal amount. You know, most of us just eat way, way too much. Yeah. And, but, you well, know, and this diet, you know, this is true severe calorie restriction. What we have here would be breakfast, some yogurt, an apple, a little bit of whole grain rice for lunch and some chicken and some carrots for dinner. This is right. 800 calories right here. This is what someone might eat on a calorie restriction. That is too few calories, calories right. if you want to go out and live an active life. Oh, yeah. 800 calories is right. well below what anyone would need, in I mean, my we opinion. We basically need 1,200 just to keep everything steady. Your body steady. needs all those nutrients. This is better for you than eating 
fatty hamburgers every day. But I, think and that's, it's, I think it's the omission, the omission of the bad foods. That's mm -hmm. really, they don't know, and they, they put that in here exactly why it works. So it may be the omission and not necessarily the calorie restriction. And one of the other side effects was decreased sex drive. Well, that's not good. I said, okay, that's not for me. Forget <laughs> I will eat. Well, and the other problem, if you're calorie restricting, I want to move on to something else. We talk about bone density. It's such a problem, particularly in elderly women. 329,000 people fracture their hips every year. And 20% of these women will go on to die within one year. It's a tragic thing when a woman comes into the ER having fractured their hip. I know what that means, and a lot of times it means a senior citizen center or a uh, rehabilitation center, potentially for the rest of their lives. People don't realize the fractures, the, how the mortality rate from fractures and women who fall, and eyesight can play into it as well, but really for women it's bone density. We have a, a still I want to show people of why it's important. That normal bone matrix, you see how thick it is, the bone is strong, whereas in osteoporosis, Essentially, your bone becomes hollow. Right. There's not just there's, there's, there's not a support. lot in there, and you know your bone can just fracture just like that. Well, it's you got easy. Some muscles, it's dude. Hey, I, I worked out <laughs> last night, so. I'm, but no, really, and you know, a good. Mm, this is what a good solid bone should look like and feel like. It's just solid inside, and it is much much harder to break. Why is it that women are predisposed? To, it's to estrogen. Problem. Estrogen so is it's very all... protective for bones. Those hormones really act a lot on your skin, on your bones, for your brain health, uh, uh -huh. and just particularly for your bone health. So as you go through menopause, as that decreases, your bones start to weaken. So bone loss begins after age 30, but now they're saying bone density scans may not be that effective. So what are women and men who also get it supposed to do? Do you still recommend the bone scans? Absolutely, because it's still the only thing we have to really kind of determine who's more predisposed. Because people who also have thyroid disease, um, they also have vitamin deficiency, they're going to be predisposed to thinning bones. We have, you know, an arsenal of medications to try and combat that, um, to build up the bone. Whether or not those should be started earlier, later, how often, you know, there's a lot of different, you know, regimens about how to build up bone, and they're not perfect. But you've got to do something because of just what we talked about, the mortality rate of a woman if she has a hip fracture. Yeah. That's why exercise is so important, mm -hmm. doing some sort of you know, weight training with your um, exercise program and, of course, adding some calcium. Calcium. The mantra of our show, prevention is key. Absolutely. Then that's not going to happen. Well, you know, we've been talking about bones and calorie restriction diets. Those are all internal issues. But, Dr. Orton, you deal with ways to make people look younger on the outside. I'm going to talk today about a great new product, a great new device. It's the next step beyond microdermabrasion. So it's non-invasive, no cutting, no laser, no heat, really no downtime. It utilizes a unique tip where what it's doing, it's actually doing dermabrasion, but infusing serum antioxidants and moisturizers. So this is real cutting edge stuff. And what it does, it, it rejuvenates your face without any of the downsides of, of surgery. And part of this system comes with it is this light therapy that actually NASA came up with. This is a little like photosynthesis that light, this is called light emission diode, that applying this to your face actually stimulates collagen growth, thickens the skin, moisturizes the skin, and makes it more youthful. Try you ready for I a mean, trial? I, it works. I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> it's going to make me feel so you younger do, too. So what you do is you just apply this and gently. Are you tightening up? Feels good. But that's, Can you feel that, anything, Jen? Well, well there's, I feel his cold hands on my back of my neck here. <laughs> no. But this is this is the newest yeah, cutting still, yeah, edge non-invasive stuff, and this is part of this uh, age reversing system that I'm going to demonstrate later in the show. It's called the hydrofacial. Correct the hydrofacial system. So later on the show, we're going to touch upon that. But first, we're actually going to go ahead and help you find out how you, if you were going to age or even possibly die, would you know what you could do to treat the problems before they even started? Dr. Eric Braverman, he's a leading pioneer in preventative anti-aging medicine and author of the book, Younger You. He says he's discovered the secret to cracking the aging code. We sent an hourly healthy looking 44 year old woman named Dawn who had questions about her medical future to Dr. Braverman's office to find out what's really going on inside her body. What I do is I scan people and break their aging code. Almost every person 
is surprised by their illnesses, and I make sure there are no surprises. Hi, Dawn. So good to meet you. Good to meet you. I'm hoping these tests will confirm that I am healthy as a horse. You're only as young as your oldest part. I smoked for several years. Everybody has five to ten hidden illnesses at 40 years old, and they don't know them. I worry about my lungs, and I'm sure I, I've done damage to them. My sleeping habits are not very good. I have an issue where my arm has these weird twitches. Ready for your 21st century physical? Yes, I am. There's enough scans that you can find every disease. That's basically it. Sometimes you have to add MRI, sometimes you have to add CT to the ultrasound. I wanted to have this physical mainly because it is 21st century, and it's going to give me heads up into my physical well-being. What scares me is the unknown. We're going to try to look for a wide array of illnesses. It's a lot of different things that normally wouldn't be tested, but should be tested. They're medically important. As a general rule, the ultrasound physical is the first place to start on everybody because it finds so much. We brain print like people fingerprint. You get the brain and mind straight, and you'll get your health straight. And so the brain map will check attention, memory, sleep pattern, energy, metabolism, weight loss. Now we're going to look at your body fat and its distribution. We're going to look at your bones, bones in your back, bones in your hip, and around. Then we have another test that tells you about your memory and attention from other perspectives, what we call flexibility of your brain. So we'll give your brain a real workout. But we'll go over all the results on Friday, and then we'll come up with an action plan that will change your life. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. We'll find out Don's results in just a minute. Plus, regardless of your age, how old are the organs in your body? They may be aging faster than you think. We'll tell you the surprising things that don't cost a lot of money, but can turn back your aging clock when we come back. You're only as young as the oldest part in the body. For the break the aging code, you want to smash down. I'm a sledgehammer that's going to break down death. I'm increasingly concerned about what don't I know. And for me, that's scary. Possibly being blindsided five years down the road with some ailment that I could have possibly prevented. And this will give me a, a certain level of peace of mind to have some information that I didn't have before. What if I told you doctors have uncovered the fountain of youth? Today we're revealing new technology that promises to crack the aging code. We sent 44-year-old Don to see Dr. Eric Braverman. He's a pioneer in anti-aging medicine for his 21st century physical Don got a full day's worth of sophisticated tests, including bone scans, brain mappings, metabolic tests, all looking to see what her medical future holds. Dr. Braverman will do an ultrasound on Don in just a bit, but first, Dr. Braverman, tell me a little bit about some of the tests that you did with Don. Well, we scanned her head to toe, so we wanted to look at her brain and her entire body with ultrasound, and we also used DEXA scan, and we even used CT scan and a lot of blood tests. That way we can find virtually every illness. When you're 44, you're more than, unfortunately, you're more than half dead, and there's a lot of hidden illnesses, about 10 in her case, and we can turn back the clock by repairing them. And they're easy to repair, so it's very exciting. No more surprise deaths like Russert, no more surprise deaths like Jennings. You do not have to just wake up one day and find yourself really sick. You can find it now and turn back the clock. I want to talk about some of the things we found on your studies. Let's first and foremost talk about the ultrasound of the thyroid that you did and talk through how important okay. the thyroid is to women, especially women Don's age. Okay. Thyroid is one of the uh, body parts that uh, ages, and sometimes people show up with hypothyroidism or a slow thyroid, and you gain a lot of weight, and you get tired, and your brain loses energy and attention and even some IQ points. Now, a normal thyroid is like this. An aging thyroid gets these nodules, uh, lumps like this. Then you head to a toward a full goiter, an enlarged thyroid, and then sometimes cancer. Just to clarify, your thyroid lives the right anterior the part neck. of your neck. Right here on the neck. It's a butterfly organ that gives you metabolism. Very difficult to feel. Very difficult exam. to feel, and it's the same thing with looking inside the body. You don't want to tap inside the body. You want to go with a computer inside the body, and she has a nodule, so that gives her thyroid an age 60, 
and it's heading towards hypothyroidism and it's enlarging. And if we don't watch that nodule, it can turn to cancer. So it's a really important finding, and there are ways to reverse it and turn back the clock on this aging thyroid. So one of the things that you do is you age organs. Yes. And in fairness, this is something that you do that is your methodology. And, it, and it's not like there's a, an exact science to it, but you do this method of saying, okay, your thyroid is maybe older than your age, and then you use that as motivation. We use it as motivation, but it also means when we turn back the clock, that she's going to get younger and lose weight. In fact, we do it all the time, just doctors don't think of it. Like if you have a lot of heart disease and your heart's pumping poorly, the guy says, oh my God, this patient's going to die in five years with heart failure. So he's really saying your heart's 95. So find it early and you don't have a, a surprise death. We've so, got, let's look at, we actually have a graphic of your thyroid that Dr. Braverman aged with, with his methodology. We decided that her age print is 60 years old and that's really the nodules and cysts on the thyroid. So Dr. Um, Braverman, how do I get rid of the nodule? Well, we say we believe iodide shrinks some of the nodules. You may actually need a low dose of thyroid, which will augment your entire weight loss program and your mood and your fatigue that you've been complaining about that results in you being stressed out. So hidden in the brain's burnout and stressed out and weight gain is a lot of old body parts. The average 40-year-old woman has five to ten old body parts that are wearing her down that she doesn't know because she looks at her face and puts creams on. We need to look at what counts in women and in men, which is their internal health. I want to move on to the liver because also some interesting findings okay. on her liver ultrasound. Okay. So we have a liver that usually sits over here. Now a normal liver basically filters your blood, goes through like that. And basically the idea of the liver is it's removing toxins. It has a lot of important functions. The average American has five to ten heavy metals, plastics, and pesticides. So when your liver starts getting clogged like this, you end up accumulating them. So you have a high rate of cancer with a fatty liver. You have a high rate of metabolic disorders. And we actually found her liver Very to be a, a bit of a fatty liver. Part of her perimenopause syndrome. Your liver gets fat. You eat the same calories that Dr. Stork and I eat, and all of a sudden you gain two pounds. So you're... Your liver's fatty, your triglycerides go up, your waistline goes big, and all of a sudden, the average person with a fatty liver can die in 10 years. But another important point here, you age printed her liver to be... I think we age printed her liver at 70 years old. Oh all right? my God. But right. it's, it's, the important thing is you talked about it. Her liver is, is, is most likely fatty because you're not an alcoholic, you're not doing other things to cause the fatty liver. It's most likely due to lifestyle that we can make changes and improve that fatty liver and we're going to talk about all that sure. and the liver is even enlarged on the cat scan and the ultrasound as well and the bottom line is that you know cholesterol goes up your waistline goes up and your liver is basically exploding with fat and you can wash out your liver it can be cleansed turn back the clock but before then I want to look at maybe the most important organ in the human body and that's your heart so I'm gonna have you lay back and we're actually gonna do a heart ultrasound to look at Don's heart and you know the ultrasound technology is wonderful because there's absolutely no radiation that you're exposed to unlike if you're getting an x-ray or a CT scan and we're gonna pull this up on our plasma screen here because I want everyone to be able to look at the chambers of Don's heart and then we're going to do an age imprint. You're only as young as your oldest part. We die from our oldest part. So you can be 35, have an old immune system, die of cancer. You can be 45, sharp as a tack, have old lungs and die of lung cancer. Or you can be basically 44 and have a bad heart valve and die prematurely either in surgery or elsewhere. Yeah, what we're looking at is blood flow is supposed to go one direction out these heart valves. Heart valves are the doors of the heart. So when the red is coming up, that's great. But all of a sudden, she's got back flow. She's got backflow in the system. It's almost like, you know, uh, the, the entire juice of the heart is coming up and then going back into heart. That's going to swell her heart. As she hits menopause, gains more weight because she's in metabolic syndrome and starts to gain, you know, if we don't fix it, which we will, all right, is you end up with the heart valve getting strained by blood pressure and other things. And you're at risk for fainting with this heart valve. It's called mitral regurgitation. You have a risk for arrhythmias and, unfortunately, even stroke. So an important thing for everyone at home, heart valves are like doors. They're one-way doors. They open up. They let blood go through. They're supposed to close. Hers is actually swinging open the other way. And that can lead to everything you talked about and ultimately heart failure. 
which is why it needs to be followed. I want you to show everyone on there where the mitral valve is. Well, this is a, a good cut up heart, but the key thing to look at here is you have these tendons, and you have, these are the hinges of the heart valve. And so what happens is when it opens and closes, you have a leak in the door. So it's sort of like a door that didn't fit properly, just like old houses need repair. Dawn's halfway through her life or more. We're going to refurbish your heart, your liver, your thyroid, your brain. You aged her heart at? I aged her heart at 60 years old because she's at risk for increasing valve replacement. She's already taken an antibiotic before dental work. She's at risk uh, when she hits the full menopause, at, which is typically 50, of going into either heart failure, hypertension, and more heart problems. Well, we're going to talk about more. We know the age print of some of Don's organs. But we have yet to talk about the most important one. We'll tell you what this is, plus what you're doing in the bedroom can actually add years to your life. We're going to look inside her brain electrical activity and see how fast her brain is, how even it is, how it shuts off, how it handles stimulation. We want to know how much of your problems are psychological and how much are currently medical. You found out that you have a fatty liver and during the break you seem pretty shocked. I was extremely shocked. I was very shocked especially as it correlated with cholesterol because my last physical my cholesterol levels were great. So I'm very shocked. But the important point, and the entire reason that we're here right now, and this is for everyone at home as well, reversible, reversible, reversible. And so what we want to do here is we're going to hit one more organ, which is your brain. And then we're going to talk about ways that you and everyone in the audience, everyone at home, can turn back the clock, including your fatty liver. Okay. You do something called brain mapping, which yes. measures the activity of Don's brain. Yes. Do we have some, some examples of that? Because essentially what you're doing here is you've got the healthy brain, the unhealthy brain. Yes. A healthy brain is firing the neurotransmitters or are working overtime. Yeah, this one here on the left. Uh, basically, the brain takes in information. It's almost like uh, dropping rocks into a lake. You know, you get those little waves, and you see that explosion. The brain is filled with action potentials, electricity. In fact, it's really the generator of the entire metabolism and body. So your young, energetic brain with lots of hormones, that's how you lose weight. Now, Dawn's brain on the right, kind of fizzling out in terms of metabolism. She can't uh, basically fire up. And she can't even shut off at night and sleep. So now her metabolism is being damaged from a double whammy of basically uh, low voltage, low blood flow, low hormones. And then at night, she doesn't even feel right. She can't shut off at night. So now you have really a weight gain. She's gained about 30 pounds over this perimenopausal period, which is basically 35 to 45. I want to take one last look at all the imprinted organs in terms of their age imprint. And so these are, again, tools that Dr. Braverman uses to let you know that your insides, which you can't see, sometimes are older than your outside, okay? Let's give some take-home points for Dawn and everyone at home on how we reverse these aging organs. Well, we do the same thing in some ways you do in dermatology and plastic surgery. You just go in there and repair with creams and skin. We take the liver, we add uh, lipoic acid, certain nutrients like N-acetylcysteine, it washes out the liver. Even if you're not deficient in iodide, you can still take iodide. Sometimes it shrinks a nodule and then you can basically come up with an entire program to augment her brain metabolism. Nutrients that will speed up her brain metabolism and nutrients that will actually slow down the heart's pumping action. First thing you got to realize is that this is fresh mint, fresh tea, green tea, mint tea, rooibos tea. When you drink tea, you got 4,000 nutrients, no calories. The key is nutrient to calorie ratio. I shoot for 24 spices a day. I'm trying to kill your appetite. I basically use two teaspoons of cinnamon with plain yogurt, get you the natural bacteria, but those two teaspoons of cinnamon pack you with 80 to 100 nutrients with no calories, control your blood sugar so you don't eat those desserts later, and basically start the upper 
during the day and at night when you're using caraway seed and fennel uh, and rosemary on your chicken the spices will calm and even your brain out and you'll find it easier to sleep at night so you're looking to really spice it up you're looking to have soups and um, veggie soups before you eat because vegetables cut appetite they make you chew anytime you're chewing whether it's apples or whether you're you know chewing different celery and foods like that you're always slowing down the way you eat so and the important thing these are also tasty spices that you add them to your diet they spice up the food it tastes better you know get rid of the mayonnaise throw it away it's bad for you change to some of these spices because they truly do spice up your meals and they're good for you as well. I mean cumin and turmeric actually improve memory and metabolism and the reality is these spices would have cost a hundred million dollars in the 1400s or 1500s. We forgot the value. They're loaded and packed with nutrients that you can't even pronounce. And the real reality is you got to exercise and have a lot of sex, too, as you get older, because the reality is... But let's sex, talk about that, because how good. do you reboot the brain? There's no question that the hormones and the sexual and exercise activity all add up to make metabolism work. We don't want to get rid of calories because we end up fading away. We want to eat the same calories we did in the 20s and 30s, but have the ability to metabolize them. Sex is part of metabolizing. Spice is part of it. Teas are part of it exercise part of it sleep is part of it so we have to shut her off at night remember if her blood sugar is uh, crazy and goes up which she already has that metabolic syndrome then she can't shut up at night she blamed herself says I can't shut my mind off I'm racing all the time I said stop blaming yourself these things are physical just because you can't well, see your you brain married? no but yep, I'm yep. looking okay so so I, can, I know I can get this at the yeah. grocery store, but I don't know about the husband, so if you can help me out on that, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> because I was going to say, the sex two times a week. Then she substitutes uh, hugs. You know what? It's really, it's not about sex. It's about love Absolutely. and intimacy. Absolutely. We all need touch. We're all living electrical beings, and if we don't share and hug and hold hands ahead of time, we even prayed before we came on the show together, it's all about touch not just about sex. I mean, obviously sex reboots the brain in a very special way, but still, touch is very powerful to everyone out there. Get a lot of hugs, a lot of love, and sleep, because sleep rebirths your metabolism. So are you excited? Very excited. Do you get a hug? Of course. Thank you, Don. You're welcome. Thanks, Dr. Brezian. For more information on things you can do to turn back your own clock, go to thedoctorstv.com. Up next is hormone replacement therapy right for you. We're answering your questions about getting older in a very special anti-aging edition of Ask Our Doctors. In this special edition of Ask Our Doctors, we're giving you real anti-aging solutions. Our first question comes from Susie. She's from Houston, Texas. We know you have a, a question you're anxious to ask us. Uh-huh. Yep. I sure do. And I tell you what, I've been on bioidenticals for over a year now. I feel absolutely fantastic. I feel like I'm 25 years old again. My skin looks great. I'm sleeping well. No hot flashes. And I have a couple of questions. Is there any, any harm right now um, of doing HRT? I know what you mean by bioidenticals. You're talking about hormone replacement therapy. Right, the and, natural. Well, it's not necessarily natural. What it, bioidenticals mean is that they're more identical, the estrogen and progesterone, to the estrogen and progesterone that are produced in your body. Those are certain chemicals. There are synthetic, natural, sort of plant-derived estrogen and progesterone as well. You feel great because estrogen and progesterone are going to make you feel great. Hormone replacement therapy is the best thing to relieve menopausal symptoms in all the studies um, for women. Problem is there are some risks as well as benefits. The benefits, hormones actually benefit your skin, your teeth, your bones, um, whole, you know, your well-being, um, your vaginal area, keeping that, you know, going really nice and healthy as well as sex does that for you too. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> she agrees with me on that one. Um, <laughs> but 
It also has some risk. If you're at risk for breast cancer, uh, then that can be a problem. If you have risk factors for cardiovascular disease, you have to do this under the supervision of a doctor. However, the bioidenticals or the ones that you can get at a, a compounding pharmacy are not any better for you or worse for you than the ones made by the pharmaceutical companies. doctor uh, at least every month and I found that when I started the bioidenticals I was always having trouble losing weight in my 40s I lost 45 pounds within the last year and this is with diet and exercise so that was a great benefit yes hormone replacement therapy can be really great for women and women should not be afraid of it they just need to do it with a doctor's supervision our next question is an email it's from Joanne in Athens Ohio and she writes dear doctors my son is in high school I overheard him talking to some friends about taking HGH I have heard that lots of teenage boys use it to buff up their bodies. I'm not really sure what it is, but I heard it's like steroids. Is that true? And should I be worried? Je Are you seeing this in oh, sure. high school kids? Joanne, what HGH is, it's human growth hormone. And sure, we use it in kids when... They have abnormally short stature, they're, they're too short, they're not growing enough, or they have certain genetic syndromes or even kidney failure. But, you know, it is true, these injections will build muscle mass, but it, they tend not to build strength. And, you know, and these things, it's, it is like a steroid. It's, you know, they're illegal in professional sports. Um, and like a steroid, there's some downsides. There's, um, you know, it can cause swelling, arthritis, headaches, diabetes, um, uh, abnormal bone growth, and even um, high blood pressure. So definitely not a good idea in kids. And uh, yes, I would be worried if your child was doing this. Well, the take-home point that you made, and I'm adamant about this as well, is you should not be taking HGH. In some cases, it can be just right. as dangerous Although as Although it's steroids. not a steroid, it's a very yeah, it's powerful a hormone. Right. When you hormone. take it, you right. shut down your own body. Mm -hmm from producing this, this naturally occurring hormone, right. which you, is not good. You're, you're tweaking your system in a bad you can way. Remind your son that it may, it may build muscle mass, but it's not going to build strength. So it's not a shortcut to working out. Yeah. Much yeah. simpler would be to have your son have whey protein. Exactly. Creatine's been proven to be pretty safe. Add it's a better protein. alternative to HGH. Add some protein. protein you'll, you'll, best. you'll build your own muscle mass. We do have another email. This one's from Sally in Long Beach, California. She writes, Dear Dr. Orden, I'm 43 years old, and I have a lot of fine lines and wrinkles on my face. I can't afford plastic surgery, and lasers do scare me. Is there anything else I can do besides creams, which I've tried, and they haven't done much for me? We get this question all the time. What can I do? I'm not ready to go under the knife. I don't want to do something invasive. And we have a great new system, a new device, the Hydrafacial Reconditioning System for the Face. Sally is actually here. And we're going to do it on her and show you a safe, painless, and affordable way to improve your skin. And if you're watching and thinking, hey, I have a medical question, I want it answered, log on to our website, thedoctorstv.com. Go ahead and send it in. We may answer it on our show next time. Coming up, this age-reversing hydrofacial, it's so affordable. Many of you at home will want to try it. So Dr. Orden is going to show us how it works on Sally on our stage. Cleaning her pores. We're getting rid of dead skin. Cutting edge stuff. No discomfort. No downtime. How's that feel, Very Sally? Exciting. It's amazing. Today we're turning back the clock on the inside of your body, but right now Dr. Orden is working on the outside. Sally wrote an email saying she couldn't afford plastic surgery. She was afraid of lasers. She was looking for an alternative to make her look younger. As you can see, he's already begun his age-reversing hydrofacial on Sally. And I know this is unique, Drew, so, so tell me why. Unique. This is the hydrofacial system by Edge. And really what it's all about is this special spiral tip. It has a vacuum, but it's also infusing serum antioxidants. 
and moisturizers. So we're cleaning her pores. We're getting rid of dead skin. We're exfoliating the existing skin. And at the same time, we're infusing all these special materials that are going to help rejuvenate, thicken, and repair her skin. How long does this take? This, this whole procedure will take about 15 to 20 minutes for her. And uh, very often we do combine it with light therapy as well. And ideally, you need to do these treatments monthly for, for I like to see, usually recommend four to five times, something like that, to see appropriate results. And you showed the light therapy earlier on Jimbo. We have the LED that we're going to do on top. Now, that works okay. totally in a different way, as I mentioned. It's sort of like photosynthesis. It's the light energy that's going into the dermis. It stimulates collagen growth, realigns elastin fibers, thickens the skin, makes it nice and healthy. And who? It feels good, too. So it feels fine? Well, yeah. like a little, I, had this, I had this done last week, too, and I, I love it. Did you really? I love it. It's so really, is anyone a candidate, then? It's, it's great for all types of skin. It's great for people that have brown spots. It's great for rosacea. It's great for acne. Uh, type skins that have uh, plug comedones, blackheads. It extracts all of that with the uh, vacuum suction component okay. of, this, of this great system. Okay. Sure all right. Now I want to. Now I want to show you. We've done. You can see she's a little bit red, but that's that suction effect. We're now going to switch and do a little light therapy, the LED therapy for her, which cutting edge stuff. No discomfort. No downtime. You know, and you have to repeat this. You have to do this. Isn't that cool looking? Actually, you can, you can do both of these. These are two different, different types of, of light. Uh, if you can help me here. Then you go over all of her skin with this light. Then you gently massage it on there and let this light penetrate into the skin, into the dermis. How's that feel, Very Sally? Exciting. It's amazing. We'll find out how Dr. Orton's age-reversing hydrofacial worked on Sally when we come back, and we'll tell you what you can do right now for younger-looking skin. I'm going to give you a hint. It's a key ingredient in a pina colada. It's not the alcohol. Sally wanted to turn back the clock on her face without going under the knife or undergoing an expensive laser treatment. So Dr. Orton gave her what he calls his new age-reversing hydrofacial. It costs about $150. I want everyone to look at Sally's before photo and then compare that with how Sally looks now. Nice. Nice. You know, Andrew, one of the most important aspects of this is the, the moisturizing aspect. Exactly. And that, that's the single best thing that we need to do for our skin to give us healthy, youthful looking skin. Moisturize. Actually, we have a special ultraviolet photos that show the results of her adding moisture to her skin after these hydrofacial treatments. Yeah, so let's look at that. So before on the left is darker, on the right is lighter with UV light and what that's showing us that your face is all full of moisture that has been put back into your face. And you can feel it more than it shows. It's it's amazing. Yeah, the texture of your face is very very nice. Yeah, it's amazing. And you know, it's the the, the improvement is subtle, but doesn't hurt. Non-invasive, no cutting, no lasers. Really no downtime. Those are the big advantages. It's like a yummy dessert. You can't wait to it get it again. Good, it? I love it. Well, speak, I love speaking it. of yummy desserts, everyone we wants to know what's right in here. a pina colada that can help us right, out. For, for those of you at home who, who don't have time or the uh, inclination to go for a facial, we have another alternative, and it's actually using pineapple on your face. And what you do, wash your face first, cut a piece of pineapple, and rub it on your face. Now what pineapple contains is bromelain, which is an alpha, alpha hydroxy acid, which is a natural antioxidant moisturizer and actually heal anti-inflammatory. So this is good stuff you can do for your skin. Apply it, 15 minutes, wash it off, and then apply a moisturizer. And you can do that every day if you wanted? 
do that every day. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. O. Thank, Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Thank you. Sally. Thank you. Did you know that the real sound of youth may be in your refrigerator right now? When we come back, we'll show you what scientists at Harvard recently found holds the secret to immortality. Two thousand four hundred Americans die of heart disease each day. That's one death every thirty-seven seconds. That's scary, right? Well, here are some simple and healthy ways to prevent you from being one of those grim statistics. If you smoke, quit. Tobacco smoke contains more than four thousand eight hundred chemicals. Many of these can come, cause damage to heart and blood vessels. Physical activity helps by increasing blood flow to your heart and strengthening your heart's contractions, so that each pump pumps more blood with less effort. Believe it or not, getting just 30 to 60 minutes of cardio five days a week can be extremely beneficial. And remember, simple everyday things like gardening, taking the stairs, and walking the dog, those count too. Taking vitamins like B12 and B6 can protect against blood clots and hardening of the arteries. Potassium and calcium actually helps lower blood pressure, and fiber-rich foods help lower cholesterol levels. Follow these tips, and you will have no need to worry. Thanks to our partners at Aleve. Visit thedoctorstv.com for more information. If you could take a miracle pill to prevent aging, would you? We've all heard that red wine is good for us, but now scientists at Harvard have discovered a molecule in red wine that they believe reverses aging. It's called resveratrol. And here's how it works. This molecule works in the gene in our body that controls the aging process. It literally seeks it out and turns it on. I think what you're saying is that that glass of wine is okay every night, right, doctor? Well, the only problem is at this point you'd have to drink a thousand bottles a day. Do Whoa. not do that, okay? <laughs> you know, scientists are working on a pill. It's still in the discovery phase. So we'll see, but until then, I have to tell you, what you need to do is keep eating a healthy diet, eat your fruits and vegetables, exercise, hug those that you love. Those are doctor's orders. I want to thank all our guests today, especially Dr. Eric Braverman. His book is A Younger You. For more information on today's show or to ask us a question, please visit thedoctorstv.com. Thanks for being here with us. Have a great day. Hello, I'm Glynis Farber, and I've been passionate for a long time about all aspects of health and nutrition, the benefits of supplements, and maintaining youthfulness at any age. Now I'm going to share with you some of the things I've learned along the way. For me, the secret is being the best you can be at whatever age you are. The key is staying healthy, flexible, energetic, and enthused about life. So what can one do to achieve this? Well, there are a few important areas to work on. Keeping active and fit, eating the right foods and learning about supplements, looking after your skin, and updating your look. This program is primarily about keeping active and fit. I've done lots of different exercises over the years, but the one that I've stuck by is yoga, and I've been practicing regularly for 25 years now. It's a great way to work out the whole body and calm the mind. I'm very lucky to have the expertise of Howard Mapper, who has helped devise a wonderful program. He's not only an innovative lifestyle and yoga expert, but also somewhat of an expert on anti-aging, something he's been researching for a number of years. The yoga we'll be doing can be done by anyone and is designed for all levels of fitness, even if you've never done yoga before. 
Don't push yourself and stop if you feel any pain. If you have any specific health problems, then make sure you consult your GP before starting this workout. The following yoga practice has been created to work out your whole body. If you do this regularly, you'll feel fitter, energized, and more flexible. When you've finished, please remember to rest for a few minutes on your mat to enjoy the full benefits of your yoga practice. Now, I've always enjoyed being active. When I exercise, I see it as time that I put aside just for me. In this section, we will be doing three rounds of a flowing yoga sequence that is designed to work with key areas of the body for flexibility and strength. So come back to the front of your mat. Take a couple of breaths, inhaling, exhalation. Another breath, inhaling. And then let the head come forward. So we continue rolling down through the spine. And then we're sequencing through each part, vertebrae by vertebrae. And we're bending the knees again and coming down. What we're going to do is push down through the feet and we're going to straighten the legs, turn it into a forward bend. That's great. Let the shoulders relax. Inhaling, exhaling. Good. Bend both knees, bring the hands to either side of the feet and then gently step the right foot back along the mat, placing the back knee onto the mat. From here, we're going to take the pelvis back and then take the pelvis forward. Inhaling and exhaling. So we're trying to release the pelvis. Relax the whole sleeve of the thighs. Combine the movement with the breath. You'll find a natural rhythm there. And then when you're ready, we're going to straighten the front leg, taking the pelvis back towards the wall behind. So we're lunging backwards. Now with the front leg, it doesn't have to be straight. It can be bent, as long as you've got a slight intensity in the back of the knee back of the hamstring, inhaling, exhaling, now. Keep length in the spine, so lift the chest, tuck the chin in and let the back of the neck extend. After you've taken a couple of breaths, you can start to come forward. Now as you come forward, we're going to bring the abdomen down first, then the chest, and then finally the head. Inhalation. So stay with the breath. You might find some intensity in the back of the leg, that's fine. If you want to just slightly bend the knee, then that's also fine as well. It doesn't have to be straight. As long as you're working with a sense of intensity there, that's what we want to try and achieve in the back of the leg at this point. Good. Okay, now from here, we're going to lunge forward. Let the chest and shoulders open, so bring in the pelvis forward. Again, breath, inhalation, exhalation. Good. Tuck the back foot under, and we're going to lift the hips up until we're in a downward facing dog. So we've gone through this before. Feet hip distance apart, hands shoulder distance apart. Again, you can bend the knees. Quite happy for you to bend the knees, particularly in the first round. Give some space to the area of the lower back. Bring your awareness back to the breath, inhaling and exhaling. Here, we're going to gently come down on to our knees and then come and lay onto our fronts. Good. Okay. Extend the arms out in front of you. Keep the pelvis where it is. Now, we're going to walk the arms over to the right-hand side, about 45 degrees. So the spine's coming with you. The pelvis stays as it is. We're opening out through the left side of the spine, left side of the waist, left rib cage. You can very gently rest your head onto the floor and breathe. Inhale, expanding into the left side of the body and let the exhalation go all the way down. Have a breath, inhaling and exhaling. Coming back to center and then coming onto the other side, again about 45 degrees. This time, the right side of the waist, right side of the rib cage, lengthen the right side of the spine, and slowly come back to center. Bring the elbows back so they're underneath the shoulders. 
So elbows onto the floor, forearms parallel, the toes underneath the back of the heels, and then very gently lift the pelvis, good. Inhaling, exhaling. Try and stay with the breath. This is quite a dynamic position. It's gonna be working the core. So if you can, just focus on the breath. Let the exhalation go down. One more breath. Good. I gently come back down. Come and rest. Make a pillow of the hands. Rest the head on the hands. And again, return your awareness back to the breath. Now, from here, we're going to bring the hands back either side of the chest. We're going to push up. We're going to push up onto all fours. Try and lift the hips at the same time as, as you lift the shoulders. Tuck the toes underneath the heels and then coming back up into a downward facing dog. Again, the knees can be bent if you want to have the knees bent. Now we're going to come back through the sequence. We're going to come back with the right foot. So bending the knees and stepping the right foot between the hands. If the foot doesn't come forward, all you have to do is lift the foot and bring it alongside. But it's quite important for when we lunge, we want the knee above the heel or the arch of the foot. So when we're taking the pelvis backwards and forwards, you don't want to be placing the knee too far forward. Make sure that the foot is directly underneath. Great. A couple of more movements backwards and forwards. Inhaling, exhaling. And then eventually taking the pelvis back. Again, create length in the spine. You might want to lift the chest. And then bring the abdomen down, then the chest down, and then finally the head. Okay, bring the pelvis forward, let the chest and shoulders open. As you lunge forward, just let the head look towards the horizon. You don't need to lift the head any higher. Keep the chin tucked in slightly, the back of the neck lengthening. Okay, now tuck the back foot under. We're going to lift the hips, and there's a little flick with the back foot as you come forward to the front of the mat. Adjust the feet so the feet are hip distance apart to begin with. Then, with the knees bent, just take the feet a little wider than hip distance. That's it. Now we're, we're going to straighten the right leg keeping the left leg bent, then transferring the weight of the pelvis over across to the right side of the mat. Try and keep the head down through the center line. I'm gonna use a block to place my hands on here. You can use a hardback book. Just slightly placing the hands can help. Take the weight across a little further. Inhalation, exhalation. Good. Let the weight go down through the straight leg from the back of the hips, dropping down into that foot. And then bending the right, straightening the left, transferring the weight across, and again, exactly the same on the other side. There's a nice movement there, going from one side across to the other, to try and sweep the pelvis as it comes over. Again, try and keep the head down through the center line. Weight goes down through the straight leg, Then, bending both knees, bringing in the pelvis back above the feet, the feet come underneath the pelvis, and we're going to roll back up through the spine, so pushing down through the feet, coming up. Now, as we come up this time, we're going to let the arms come above the head, so sequencing the arms above the head. So coming down into round two, so let the arms come down and roll through the spine, same as before. Bending the knees, relaxing the shoulders. Now, pushing down through the feet, again into a forward bend. Keep the spine long. Try and keep the chin tucked in and the back of the head extended towards the wall in front. The hands can be lightly touching the floor. They don't necessarily have to be touching the floor if they're hanging away from the floor. Just make sure the shoulders aren't collapsing. If you want to, you can place your hands on, onto your legs. When we bend the knees, we're going to bring the hands either side of the feet. And this time we're going to step the left foot back, so the left foot steps back along the mat, back knee onto the mat. So same as we did before, lunging back, 
and then lunging forward, inhaling and exhaling. Okay, so we're going to slightly change this. So on the next lunge, as we take the pelvis back, we're going to tuck the foot underneath. We're going to lift the pelvis and keep the back leg straight. Now, you can, however, have the front leg bent if you're finding this quite challenging. So, Glynis, if you want to bend that front knee. But you still want to try and keep a certain amount of intensity in there. The leg doesn't necessarily have to be straight. It can be straight-ish. Do you feel that through the back of the leg still? Good. Relax the back ankle and let the heel sink. These are intense positions. So just slowly work your way into this, just working with that bent knee. Now, from here, keep the length in the spine. We want to tabletop back. We're going to lengthen the spine along the leg. Again, coming forward with the abdomen first, then the chest, and then finally the head. Exhalation goes all the way down. And then from there, we're going to bend the knee, bring the pelvis forward. Now lifting the hips and sweeping the right foot back into a downward facing dog. Now we're going to do a variation. Now Glennis, if you want to keep both feet resting on the floor, so what I'd like you to do is bend the right knee so you've got the left leg straight and let the weight go down through the left ankle. I'm just going to let place my foot on the back of the left ankle and let it rest. This gives me a little bit more weight to drop the heel. It doesn't matter if the heel doesn't touch the mat. That's not important. So whether the heel touches or doesn't touch, just releasing the ankle and letting the weight drop down. Bring the right foot back down onto the mat. Bend the knees. Come down onto your front once again. Good. Okay, extend the arms out in front of you. Now spider the fingers towards the wall in front, so you're going to extend the arms forward. When you've done that, open up the palms of the hands and let the hands rest. Now we're going to want to try and lengthen the tailbone back towards the wall behind you. So imagine that you're trying to point or extend the, the tail back towards the heels. So I'm hoping this is going to give you a nice feeling of length here in the area of the lower back. Inhaling, expanding again, exhaling as you contract. Again, one more breath, inhalation, exhalation. Good. Okay, from there, bring the hands back a little closer towards you. Again, hands shoulder distance apart. This time we're going to push down through the hands and straighten the arms. So we're going to lift the rib cage off the mat. What I'd like you to do here is have the abdomen supported and then the rib cage just starting to lift off. So you can adjust the hands, you can take the hands a bit further forward if it's too much, or you can bring the hands a little bit further towards you. You don't really want to have the, the base of the ribs lifting away. Take a couple of breaths. Chin tucks in, again extending the back of the head, so the spine lengthens. Tuck the toes underneath the heels, and then from here we're going to very gently lift the knees off the mat. That's good. I always think if you would be standing up, you'd be bending quite far back in this position. So it's quite a deep back bend. Yeah. Okay, come forward can make a pillow with the hands again and rest the head onto the hands a couple of breaths then when you're ready place the hands either side of the chest again lifting the hips at the same time as the shoulders we're going to come back into a child position you can use in this position you can use any of the variations we showed you earlier on we're not going to stay here too long Then bring the hands forward, once again out in front of you. Tuck the toes underneath the heels, then coming back up into our downward facing dog, coming back through the sequence. So this time we're gonna come onto the right leg. Right leg straight, left leg bent. So again, Glynis, if you want to keep both feet onto the mat, and I'm gonna take my left foot and just hook it around the back of the right leg. 
Weight goes down through the straight leg. Inhalation, exhalation. Bring the left foot back down onto the mat, bending both knees and then stepping the left foot forward in between the hands. Great. Back knee down onto the mat, take the pelvis back, take the pelvis forward, inhaling and exhaling. That's it. Now, next movement, suck the back foot under and from there keep down through the front leg. Again, if you want to bend that front knee slightly, that's fine. Is that just a little intense there? Yes. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So you can adjust that again. Keep the length in the spine. The most important thing probably is to actually keep the length in the spine because we're going to bring the spine forward. So that tabletop back and then bringing the abdomen down and then the chest and then finally the head. Good. Okay, bend the front knee, bring the pelvis forward. A little flick with the back foot as you bring the right foot forward. Good, knees bent again. We're going to step the feet out a little wider than hip distance apart. This time we're going to externally rotate the toes, so just turn the feet out towards the side. Again, we're going to straighten one leg, left leg straightens, and then transferring the weight of the pelvis across. Head stays in the center. Again, I'm going to use the block. So, again, placing my hands onto a block or a book just helps me get the spine to lengthen and I can relax the shoulders. If I relax the shoulders, the pelvis can perhaps release a little more. Let the weight go down through the straight leg. Bending the left and then straightening the right and transferring the weight across. Most people will tend to move the head, so just be aware that you're not moving the head, that you are keeping the head in that line and in fact you are moving the pelvis. Don't worry if the pelvis is tight, it might not move that much, but very gently moving across, the weight going down through the straight leg. Good. Turn the toes back to center, feet underneath the hips, hips above the feet, Pushing down through the feet once again and rolling up through the spine. And as you come up through the spine, the arms come above the head. And that takes us to the end of round two. Coming down with the arms into round three. Good. This time we're going to take the arms back up again, inhaling. Exhaling as you come back down. Relax the shoulders. Keep the wrist relaxed, inhalation, nice fluid movement with the arms. Coming down, that's it, good. One more round, inhalation. Hands come up and then bring the hands down through the center line. And then from there, take the hands back behind you. Now, you have a choice. You can take hold of the elbows, or if you want to, you can bring the hands into the prayer position. But this one is absolutely fine. I'm gonna stay with this one. If you want, if you find this a little hard, you can then continue up and down with the arms in this section. But then once the hands are back here, then rolling the shoulders forward, up, back, and down. That's good. Great. So bringing them forward, up, back, and down. Both shoulder blades moving at the same time. Try and keep a fluid movement going. Combine the movement with the breath. Good. Opposite direction. Now, you're using new muscles as you move in the opposite direction. So you might have to just tune in with the movement again. Forward, down, back, up. Nice and fluid. Good. Okay, great. Now, release the hands. And then stepping the right foot back along the mat. That's good. Bring the arms out to the side. Now, adjust the feet. You want the distance to roughly be in between the two wrists. So that will give you a rule of thumb. Keep the feet parallel with each other. You don't want the toes turning out to the side. To try and keep the feet in as if they were on train tracks. Now, from here, what we're going to do is bend the knees and 
Take the hands onto the mat. Extend your hands out in front of you. Still keep the knees bent. So we're in a downward facing dog, basically, just with the legs apart. Inhaling, and then as you exhale, push down through the feet and straightening the legs. Good. Try and keep the length in the spine. Chin's tucked in, the back of the head's extending away. Again, try and get the length between the tailbone and the back of the head. A couple of breaths. And then from here, bring the hands back to the mat. Turn the left foot forward, bring the hands either side of the front foot. Lift the hips, sweeping back into a downward facing dog. Good. Coming down onto your knees. Now, coming onto your left elbow, have the left elbow down, forearm out in front of you, open up the palm of the hand. You can either have the feet on top of each other or separate the feet. Right hand in front of you, and then from there lifting the hips and bringing the hand up. Try and find the relationship between the upper arm and the lower arm because it gives you stability through the shoulders. You want the pelvis to be in line between the heels and the shoulders, so you don't want the pelvis too low or too high. Inhaling, exhaling. Chin's tucking in, the back of the head's extending away. Good. Bring the right hand down, make a pillow with the hands. From there, rest the head. Couple of breaths. And then when you're ready, we're going to come back round. We're going to do a spinal rotation, so feet hip distance apart. Bring the hands back behind, so just lean back slightly. That's it, good. Left hand back behind, and then bring the right hand across to the outside edge of the left knee. Inhaling, exhaling. Good. Try not to crank the head around. Try and keep the neck, the neck released. If you keep the neck released, then you're going to allow a bit more space in the spine. Let the breath do the work, expanding. Inhalation. Good. Okay. Come back. Round onto your right side. So we're going to repeat. Same as we did before. Right elbow down, left hand in front, and then coming up. Good. Inhaling, exhaling. Try and keep that stability through the shoulders again, the upper arm connected to the lower arm. Great, bring the left hand down, make a pillow with your hands again so you can have a rest. Inhaling and exhaling. And relax the shoulders. Good. So from there, coming round, we're going to add in the twist. So again, feet hip distance apart, slightly leaning back, taking the left hand across the right knee. Right hand just resting in the middle of the back behind you. Try not to push around. It doesn't matter how far you come around. The most important thing is the breath is working in the way that we've instructed you. Expanding and contracting, and let the exhalation go all the way down. Good. Come back to center. Now, coming back onto your mat, bringing the arms above the head, place the feet parallel with each other, and then pushing down through the feet and lifting the hips. So we're bringing the spine back into alignment once again. You can always think it's quite nice to roll back down through the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. So very gently, tucking the tailbone under, moving through the area of the lower back, and then finally the pelvis comes down. Inhale, and let the exhalation go down. Good. Then, coming around, back up into 
a downward facing dog. Coming forward with the right foot. Again, bring the right foot forward, lift it up if it doesn't come all the way. And then come back up into standing, adjust the position. That's great. Bend the knees. Then we're going to come forward, but this time, rather than lengthening out in front, what's a good idea is if you can try and bring the head down towards the mat. Don't worry how far forward you're going to come, it's not important. Just very gently coming forward. Again, if you want to bend the knees, you can bend the knees slightly. Having the head come forward. Bend both knees. Bring the right foot to the front. Hands either side of the front foot. A little flick as you come forward. Now this is the last rolling up. So really try and get a sense of ironing out through the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. Coming up through the spine, chest and shoulders open. The arms come above the head. That's it. And then finally bring the arms back down. Back into our standing position once again. Inhalation. Exhalation. Well, when I went to medical school to talk about things natural was a, an act of heresy. They persecuted, hated, annoyed, and harassed me. They didn't like the ideas of natural medicine, anti-aging, reversing the aging process, restoring functions to organs, all these different things. They thought I was crazy. And things have changed, as that now people have recognized through good common sense. Still, they haven't let go fully of the idea of synthetic drugs. They haven't really recognized this. But we do know that there are unhealthy fatty foods, trans fatty acids. We do know that we need to get fiber. We need to get fruits and vegetables. We need much exercise, stretching of the spine, etc. Cleansing the colon is an excellent idea on a regular basis. Keep your colon clean and choose the path between health and obesity making sure to get all the good fresh vegetables, fruits and fiber, and not the good sugars, not the bad sugars, good oils, not the bad oils. The cruciferates are very, very good. Drink lots of water, cleanse the body and the mind, an apple a day helps keep the doctor away. And there's more reports that we have for you on anti-aging. It's more, a lot of fun to read about and to see that the world of medicine is changing and getting to understand more about the body natural. This is Desiree Dubonnet signing off.